Now there's something to speak about here when it talks about being tired. The Prophet ﷺ never taught us to seek tiredness for the sake of seeking tiredness or seek is exhaustion for the sake of being exhausted. Ma khayyara sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayna imrain. Prophet ﷺ was not given a choice between two things except for what? Ikhtara, aysarahuma. The Prophet ﷺ took the easier one of the two routes. If there were two equal things in front of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always chose the easier route alayhi salatu wa sallam. He told his companions not to sit out in the hot sun if they have shade. He taught his companions and he taught his wife radiallahu ta'ala anha Zainab when she had the rope in the masjid to hold herself up when she would get tired that once a person reaches that point where they no longer know what they're saying anymore at that point you should go to sleep. So the Prophet ﷺ was not one who taught us to self-destruct, to hurt ourselves but there's a natural element of a tab of, of, of hardship, fatigue, that comes with worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in these seasons. And there's a visual in Arafah that I always think about. May Allah Azza allow us to return to Arafah. Everyone say Ameen and have an accepted Hajj. When Allah is boasting to the angels and He says, Look at these ibad, look at them. And Allah says, Ghubra, they're covered in dust, they're tired, they're disheveled. What are they seeking? They're seeking Allah's mercy. Bear witness, O angels, I've forgiven them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks out at the people and sees them tired. The Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, and I want you to think about this hadith. It's actually the end of one of the Arba'in al Nawi. The Prophet وسلم, said, Kullu nasi yaghdu. It's actually one of my favorite ahadith. In Arba'in Anawi, it's the end of it. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Every morning you wake up selling your soul. Every day you wake up in the morning and your capital, what you put on sale, is your soul. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you either free your soul or you destroy it. Think about that idea here. That you wake up in the morning and your soul is your commodity. You're either going to sell it to this dunya or you're going to sell it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And to sell it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is a means by which you liberate it to sell it to this dunya is a means by which you destroy it, you cause it to perish. Meaning what? What exhausts you? What gives you concern? What are you thinking about at night when you put your, when you put your head to your pillow? What's consuming your thoughts at that point? What is it that causes you to ache? What is it that causes your heart to beat a little bit faster? What are you losing sleep over? As much as that can be Allah, then that's better. Now, it is unreasonable, and there's a reason why we don't do this throughout the year. It's unreasonable to be in last 10 nights mode throughout the year. Just like it's unreasonable to fast every day of the year. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited it, right? This is not a reasonable daily schedule. But the spirit and the proportion of it should carry on after Ramadan in the same way that the other elements of Ramadan do carry over. How are you tiring yourself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How are you exhausting yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you putting yourself through for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not an unnecessary incurring of hardship upon yourself. But there are those There are those that sell their selves for the pursuit of Allah's pleasure and for the pursuit of Allah's mercy. And so I want you, inshallah ta'ala, as you feel that sense of tiredness, you know, it's, it's interesting because in the last 10 nights you're looking for that deeply spiritual moment. You're looking for that moment that you feel a deep connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make that dua and you force a tear maybe. And all of that is good. All of that is wonderful. But it might be that the moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at you and has the most mercy on you is when you are in your weakest and most vulnerable point, vulnerable point and it's 4 a.m and you're trying to walk and keep your eyes open for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that might be the moment that Allah looks at you and forgives you and grants you Laylatul Qadr. 
that moment that you're at your most exhausted. Because Allah accounts for that fatigue, Allah accounts for that exhaustion. كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا فَبَائِعُ النَّفْسَ إِمَّا مُعْتِقُهَا وَإِمَّا مُوبِقُهَا Everyone wakes up in the morning selling their soul for something. Either they liberate their soul by that, or they destroy their soul by that. May Allah make us amongst those who sell ourselves for His pleasure, who pursue His pleasure with everything that we have. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the halal risk, our jobs that we go about doing throughout the day, the things that we do that are otherwise mundane, the idle things that we do that we do just because we live. May Allah make all of that fi sabilihi. All of that in his cause because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards everything that is permissible when it's done seeking his pleasure as an act of worship as well. So may Allah count our sleep, may Allah count our eating, may Allah count our worldly duties also as forms of worship. And may Allah allow our greatest concern to always be his pleasure and the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who achieve the best of it. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.